This is a game we in. We in a fucking hustle. We in a grind. Everybody ain't 50 Cent. Everybody ain't Puff. Everybody ain't Jay-Z. You got to stick with a nigga. Grind with a nigga. You got to do your job. Whatever your record is, if I was a promo man, whatever record you give me, I'm going to get played. Because my tongue going to move that quick. I'm going to get the shit done whether niggas like it, love it, hate it, whatever. Tiffany Henyard, the embattled mayor of Dalton, has been the subject of numerous investigations, and more people are stepping forward to share how her actions have personally affected them. Among those speaking out is Dalton's Board of Trustees, a group that has never hidden their disdain for Henyard's leadership. Now, it seems the mayor has had enough of their attacks and she's fighting back aggressively. The fallout between Henyard and the trustees, which began over the mayor's handling of the village's finances, has been growing for months. The trust- The acceptable monster at this time, like R. Kelly was the last time I sat on this couch. Mm. So who's next? Y'all don't see the lineup? Oh, yeah, no. yeah we, we see, see the lineup. I, I'm just waiting to see who's next. Who's like Jay-Z is setting Diddy up. Why is everyone having such a hard time? He ain't doing shit. He lined up D Haven, stole his life and identity. He lined up Big L, stole his life and identity. He lined up Dame Dash, stole his life, identity, and took his love. Lined up R. Kelly. He wants to be the one. Yeah, shout out D Haven. He actually hit us up, wanted to tell this story. You need to talk to D Haven. Yeah, we need to talk to him. I told you that last year you when did. I put you on the phone with him. You did. I want you to think about this. Allegedly, Sean Carter is responsible for enacting Hype Williams to put a Leo on a faulty plane to move her out the way as punishment for rejecting him. And so he could level up Beyonce, who was struggling. Let's just say allegedly that happened. Now I want you to think about 106th and Park with Mary J. Blige. Free, who is a victim of Sean Carter. Yeah. Mary J. Blige, who is a victim of Sean Combs, are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah amongst each other. Think about that. You got a Diddy victim, you got a Jay-Z victim, and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened. And yet, they had to sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. Think of the power of that moment. Think about Claudia Jordan right now. Claudia Jordan don't ever mention my mother name she mentioned it yesterday talking about why people are afraid to come forward you mean like you you was diddy girl corey was jay-z girl why don't you claim your friend claudia So, Jack, when you say... Jay when I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh, yeah. That's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's Jay pregnant Z's, mistress yeah. who died of an imaginary fucking aneurysm. Just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora who wrote the book, Bling, and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. These were the first to sound the alarm over what they called questionable financial practices. And since then, they've left no stone unturned in exposing what they believe is widespread corruption under Henyard's watch. One of the most outspoken critics, trustee Carmen Carlyle, called Henyard a manipulator who took advantage of Dalton's hardworking people accusing her of showing no remorse for her actions. Carlyle's strong words reflect the growing tension in Dalton as the feud between the mayor and the board reaches new heights. What was once a behind-closed-doors struggle for power has now spilled out into the public, leaving the town in chaos. The tipping point came during a recent explosive meeting. Despite the trustees' decision to postpone it, Henyard went ahead with the original date and made a controversial move by appointing a new administrator. 
Not only was this likely illegal without the boards present. Who the fuck was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is fucking you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no fuck. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. You could try to get a special prosecutor, but they'll just pay somebody to reassign him to another case. Where the fuck do you go when you get fucked over by the industry? Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me step in. You f right, I go to Diddy parties to walk mother f out. Cause ain't nobody stopping me when I come. So let me ask you, because I look at a uh, Gabriel Union and when you mention things like Jay-Z's time is coming for him, then I look at a, uh, you know, Beyonce. And I say that, you know, women do have a that country album and any of you that buy that she a stupid as shit. You don't give it's it okay. Trap music with goddamn a holster and a hat. But she remade Jolie. Dead bitch. I'ma tell you the song she should have remade. It's a hit. It would have done great for her. She should have tried it on. Tammy Wynette, classic. Stand by your man. Don't act like you don't know that hell. Remake that. Stand by that. That's a real country hit. Jolene, nice. But it has a ring to it. Stand by your man. Yeah. Whoops. And disrespect you with other like Kathy Coriana White. Mm. All right, well, let's do it like was this. was actually carrying his baby while you was faking it. Why your husband don't want to put his seed inside of you and put it in everybody else? Wild in this world, it, yo. It, it's funny you open up uh, Beyonce's internet; it just gets weird. Um, Beyonce's internet. That, that's what we're calling that it. That belongs to the <laughs> devil, <laughs> unless you calling that the devil. She ain't number the employee. Oh, oh. A half of which dumbass bitch. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's funny that it's it's crazy you say these Why things. Why don't just... nobody want to accept that that bitch bitch? I think she's she went and killed the girl cats. <sighs> okay. A girl went to court <clears throat> and charged her with extreme witchcraft. <clears throat> she she was hypnotized. She was drugged. But it also inflamed tensions, especially considering Dalton already had a functioning administrator in place. Henyard's lawyer made a strong case against postponing the meeting, but her bold appointment of a new administrator, whose background is considered shady by many, has severely damaged her credibility. This isn't the first time Henyard has appointed someone with a questionable history. Remember Police Chief Lewis Lacey? He was fired for bankruptcy fraud and perjury, but later reinstated by Henyard. Many in Dalton are drawing parallels between Lacey's appointment and this latest administrator who some believe should be in jail alongside Henyard, not sitting in a high-ranking position. In the midst of the ongoing power struggle, Henyard launched a vicious verbal attack on the trustees, blaming them for the chaos enveloping Dalton. She didn't mince words, making it clear she believed they were responsible for the village's current they're eating on her and shit while she was asleep. No snacking on his bitch. Killing people cats. And guess what? They wouldn't give her the restraining order. They just told her to stay away from Beyonce and work for somebody else. Guess what? She's having a hard time finding work too which is interesting because she's a brilliant musician and she was trained at the Berkeley, esteemed Berkeley College of Music, handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington, Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington. 
who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started f***ing all the girls. Impulse control issues? I don't know. I'm saying, Sean Carter, you're a piece of shit. Taking Pimp C wasn't bad enough. You just want to go down there and you want to just remove all of the balls from every real f gangster in Houston. Why the fuck did that house burn up? Who the fuck goes to their childhood house for a visit and the shit goes up in flames? That was very weird. The next day, and, and the, within the week? And the, no, the next day. The next day. And, and still, no real investigation on how the house just went up in flames. <sighs> Man. I guess they paid y'all off. Like they paid y'all off for that astral world. So, let me ask you. Texas um, politics. Yeah, Texas politics, man. It's, it's there right there. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the episode, but for right now, I just gotta get your take on when we see a killer Mike win three Grammys and get arrested immediately yeah. after because Jay Z paid somebody up just so he couldn't have a good night. You Sean. Hey man. Weirdo. I don't get no what you got in your head that neural link. You'll never outthink me. Ever. All I do is frustrate your fing AI. You can't quantify me. You can't even control your wife. You gonna handle a bit like me. You can't even control that goofy bit. You should have did a better job. Maybe she wouldn't have had to lose her mind on Kathy. Because you ain't protecting you. You're protecting her. Wonder why? That's a good bro. State of disarray. Her statements were bold and designed to send a clear message that she wouldn't back down without a fight. But Henyard's troubles extend beyond this public feud. The Attorney General's office under Kwame Rawol has also weighed in, revealing that Dalton violated the Open Meetings Act during both its June and July sessions. Residents, frustrated by limited seating, blocked entrances, and an overall unwelcoming environment. I want to touch on a friend, Diane, but even before we get there, I got to ask you about 2000, 2001, Jay-Z Unplugged. Yeah. The Jaguar Ride is there, yeah. heart of the city. Yeah. It's the, it's the 21 year anniversary. It's the 21 year anniversary, month. and I don't think we've seen nothing like that since. And I know you posted it. We're going to talk about the network, but I know you posted it and put it out there. Uh, I want you to touch on the either the genius or the insanity of Jay-Z. Um, this man, as far as what he's done since then, is, you know, either preordained, destined, or he had a plan. But it seemed like he geared himself towards it. But you were there to witness it firsthand from what he was back then. I just want you to like, because, you know, not many people have a firsthand account of what this man is doing and what he's about to do. In 21 years, I have never had anything to say about Mr. Sean Carter, other than the fact that we had a pleasant working relationship and he was an excellent businessman. 21 years. 21 years. And after 21 years, what I will say to you is, is, is this. The first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. But he didn't show up as Jay-Z. He didn't show up as the hottest rapper on the street. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Rest For in those peace. Of you. Rest in peace, Big L. Rest in peace, Big L. One of the that dopest. Was the One of the dopest. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. Without question. And then Big L died, and then the next thing you know, Jay Z. And then, you know, he starts clientele with Tupac 
and clientele with Biggie and doing songs with Biggie and building a working, you know, camaraderie with Honeycombs and um, AKA Diddler, I mean Diddy. And um, why do you give him the honeycombs? Why, why do you give him honeycombs? Because he smacks so sweet. That fucking side of my <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, then you know, and then reasonable doubt was happening, and then Dame's in the picture, and Dame's building Rockefeller, and everybody's talking about Jay Z, Jay Z. And don't get me wrong, there is nobody. Love. Lodged numerous complaints about being shut out of the meetings. Some couldn't even get inside, instead waiting outside as the drama unfolded. The only evidence that surfaced was a critical letter sent to Henyard's mother's home, but it arrived after the meetings and contained no threats. For those who managed to get inside the meetings, the spectacle was something to behold. The gatherings had become notorious for residents arriving early to air their grievances about unpaid bills and payroll issues. The meetings, which are meant to be open forums for the community, have devolved into chaotic, tension-filled events where people feel silenced rather than heard. Many citizens voice their frustrations, pointing out that public meetings are supposed to allow everyone the chance to speak and address their concerns with the mayor. But instead, strict security measures and threats of shutdowns have kept the people of Dalton at arm. Mm. At the time Nobody. of. No, still. Yes, to this day. Still. Listen to me, I don't give a fuck how I feel about you. For me to have bad feelings about someone and not acknowledge art and its greatness or at its finest is hating. Maybe I don't fuck with you, but them shoes is hot, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you gotta be real. Mm. So I will never, Shit, I was just listening to Watch the Throne earlier this week and I'm and that shit was enraging me. Cause I'm like, y'all motherfuckers was living for this fucking album and was Kanye Kanye. Kanye Kanye. And then all of y'all made all of this money on this motherfucking dude. And now all of a sudden. Who him? <laughs> like, <Yeah. okay. laughs> Like he was good enough when you let him slump just Blaze's fucking whole career. Mm. He was the shit. That's the whole issue in the it, it, it was worth putting just Blaze on the line for because just Blaze was Rockefeller production until Kanye. Yeah. Who's just Blaze producing for now? That I don't know. Who is he? Yeah, I about to say that I don't know. And he was there. He was he was the movement. Where is just Blaze? Yeah. I mean, he was making hoes beats. You got title. You're a billionaire. Mm. Where the fuck is just Blaze? That's the question. Is he, why is he, he's not at least an executive at Rock Nation? He's not at least an executive at Title. At least. Like I said, Biggie, Biggie died, Tupac died. And then there was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas, and Jay-Z, and then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and it's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both fucked Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. You know? And then, it was a falling out. And that's like it never happened. Whoever talks about best of the both worlds, best of both worlds. Nobody talks about that. Nobody project. talks about this yet. Nobody they, yeah, talks they, about that project. Swept, that nigga swept that smooth under the rug. Why? <laughs> yeah, we know why. You know what? I got a better question. Yeah. How valuable is a Biggie Smalls verse? Mm. Yeah. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting 
He hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Fucking Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all the bad boy. His catalog. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse. It's very valuable. Am I wrong? Does anybody disagree with length? While the trustees openly accuse Henyard of mismanagement, she continues to brush off their claims. The recent meeting ended in complete disarray, with no business being conducted after the trustees walked out in protest. The trustees are so fed up with the situation that they've called for a special meeting next Monday to address the mounting issues. One glaring example of Henyard's mismanagement, according to the trustees, is her manipulation of the board into passing questionable laws. The most shocking of these was a law that raised the fine for having an unmowed lawn from $75 to a staggering $500. This, they say, exemplifies why they had no choice but to take action against her. It's just one of many instances where the board feels they were duped into supporting policies that harm the citizens of Dalton. Among the most damning accusations against Henyard is her misuse of village finances. Reports show that she spent thousands of taxpayer dollars. So then what the fuck happened to the commission? What happened to that album? Right. It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. And then starting his own company. <clears throat> so tell me something. And this ain't me being an asshole. I think everybody that knows Sean Carter knows that he will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. Like, I don't give a fuck if you wanted to get away from your homie, if you wanted to get away from your partner, but to do it the way he did it, it's malicious. But maybe that was because he was fucking the girl that didn't want you. Oh. Let the church say amen? I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you moved his ass around and now the Rockefeller so tough and then just moved right over to Def Jam. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Damn on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit, it was some of the worst shit ever. They were having a hard time taking her solo. And then Aaliyah died. And then they brought Rich Harrison in. And you know how kind of think it's okay to ride now. She liked posing with him in pictures for, for page six. Aaliyah didn't. She fell in love with Dane. And Aaliyah's gone. And, you know. You have to start asking yourself questions after being in this business for this long if you're a halfway intelligent person when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting right is it really a conspiracy if the same person keeps benefiting off the same kind of tragedy over and over and over again so to answer your question um I'm sure he's always gonna be a billionaire and I'm sure he's got great things to happen. I mean, look, he's got the job with the NFL. He's hooking all his friends up with the halftime shows. I mean, think about it. Think about the halftime shows. Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, all rock nation. Now uh, Rihanna and then um, we had the whole LA thing, which of course he was involved in that. And then they, they pulled Mary J. Blige off to, you know, make, make sure she got that money for Kendu. And, you know, they had that, that whole moment, you know, and, but all he's doing is using his friends and the people that he fucks with, or at least the people that signs his non-disclosure agreements, he keeps getting them the Super Bowl gig. So, I mean, like, he's doing all kinds of stuff, you know, and, and I do not begrudge him. It's just, 
if you gotta do the kind of things that he's done to get where he's gotten, well, fuck it, I, I, I don't want it that bad. She's on luxury trips, cars for herself, her mother and her boyfriend, and even unauthorized projects like an ice rink that was neither approved nor wanted by the people. Her decision to flaunt the ice rink on social media in the midst of her legal troubles has only added to the outrage. It seems Henyard has not learned to exercise caution, even with so many eyes on her. This ice rink is just one example of Henyard's reckless spending, and it's emblematic of a larger issue her ongoing refusal to work with the Board of Trustees. Instead of seeking approval for projects, she barrels ahead, ignoring the established processes. This behavior has many people in Dalton questioning whether the village can survive without outside intervention. The financial mismanagement, corruption, and deep-rooted tension between Henyard and the trustees have done damage that some fear is impossible to repair. Despite all this, Henyard... I've seen the video, it went viral. It was a real big video, man, it went viral, man. And his name is Uncle Ryan, and he claims that he used to work for Puffy, he was one of Puffy bodyguards, and he said that Puffy, Puffy offered him 30000 to kill Biggie for his publisher. How you feel about that, yo? And do you know this guy? Well, first and foremost, you gotta realize this. <laughs> Anybody can come on this internet and say anything, right? And dude is getting a whole lot of attention because people are even calling me, asking me about him, you know? And I don't know him from a can of paint. He even, he even mentioned my name saying that I know. I know what I know. I don't know what he knows. But I do know this, that it's only three people that had contracts with Puff and Bad Boy. Me, Wolf, and Paul Offord. If he didn't come through Paul Offord security, Green Gate security, he didn't have a contract with Puff. Because anybody who worked for Puff, other than me and Wolf, came through Green Gate security. That was Paul's security thing. Especially at the time that he was saying that he worked for Puff. Or Puff offered him 30000 Now, anybody knows this. That Bad Boy took 50% of all this artist publishing. Right? 50% of all the artists publishing straight out the rip. Then Puff gave Big 200,000 for the rest of his publishing. So what publishing did he was trying to get and keep from Puff? You understand what publishing was Puff was trying to get when he already had it? He had already paid for it. What part of the catalog was he talking about? I don't understand that. And then he said that Puff offered him 30,000. I can't say he lied, but I can say that he wasn't a part of bad boy security that I know. I knew everybody who worked during them days. You understand? And I don't know dude from a can of paint. So whoever this Uncle Ron dude is, he's a liar then, he's a fraud. Is he a fraud? Bruh, he's what he is. He wasn't part of our security that I knew of. Not at that time. He never been on no trips with us. He never been at no parties, no nothing. So is he a fraud? The internet will have the real niggas looking fake and the fake niggas looking real. Put it together. How could he want Biggie publishing when he already had it? That's where he fucked up at. That's where he fucked up at. How you want something that you already own? Yeah, you right, you right. I know I am. That's where he fucked up at. Bad Boy owns 50% of the shit already as an artist. They got 100, just, they got 100%. Bad Boy takes 50% right off the top. Then he gave Big 200,000 for the rest of his publishing. So now, the other stuff goes to the producers or whatever, or the music. So what is he talking about? Remains in office, clinging to her position with an iron grip. Many in Dalton believe she should be focused on staying out of jail, but instead she appears more concerned with holding onto her title. 
Her legal defense team has been working tirelessly to prove her innocence, but they've also shifted tactics, attempting to garner sympathy from the citizens of Dalton. Unfortunately for Henyard, sympathy is in short supply. The people of Dalton are in a far worse position than their mayor, and they certainly didn't dig their own grave. As the legal process drags on, many are left wondering whether justice will be served and how much longer the village can endure this political storm. The once quiet town of Dalton has been thrust into the national spotlight, and residents are left questioning whether their village can emerge from this turmoil unscathed. While Henyard continues to fight for her position, the people of Dalton are fighting for their future, and that future grows more uncertain by the day. With the trustees walking out of meetings and the mayor continuing to- Music video hypnotized. Is there any truth to that from what you know? Bro, he lying and the truth ain't in him. You hear what I'm saying? I've seen the autopsy report of Big's death. The complete autopsy report. You understand? Hypnotized was shot, you understand, about a week, or not even a full week before Big, Big's death. They test his liver, his kidneys, and all his other shit. And there was not no drug ecstasy in his system. See, all that shit is whereas that, what can I say right now to get me attention? What can I say to stop people from thinking, oh, I didn't go to Brooklyn for the uh, celebration of Big 50th. I didn't go to the party. I didn't go to none of the things that New York had opened up the city to celebrate for Big. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw people off by saying and bring another little attention to like, oh yeah, me and Big was doing E. Come on, man. Big was doing a lot of other pain pills, a lot of other stuff like that because of his situation. But ecstasy was not one of the things that was in his system. Go see the autopsy report. It's evidence that's out there that Puff and Big wasn't as close as they try to make it seem. You understand what I'm saying? Big was leaving the label. Big wanted his marketing back. Big wanted his publishing back. So he had, he was, he was, he found out as being an artist, yo, the money is in the publishing. The money, I make money by my name and my face and my marketing. Probably make more money in the publishing than he do doing tours and all his other shit. Bad boy take 50% of your publishing if you're an artist. Now you got 50% left that's gotta be shared with producers, other writers, and the artists. Then he bought big portion of that for another 200,000. Come on, man. That's what your man do to you? When you down and out? And you done made him millions? To push her agenda without their input, it's hard to see how Dalton will move forward. The political gridlock has reached a point where the only viable solution might be to get Henyard out of office entirely. But that process, like everything else in this small village, is moving far too slowly for those who are suffering the most. For now, the people of Dalton are left in limbo, watching as their leaders clash in a power struggle that shows no sign of slowing down. The longer it takes to hold Henyard accountable, the more damage will be done to the village. And for many, the question is no longer whether Henyard will be removed. We did. You were speaking about how Puffy, he told on Suge Knight, Irv Gotti, and Jay Prince about the distribution company they was trying to make. How do you know for a fact that Puffy told the police? So if you don't mind, can you break that down some more, yo, for the people? Because it wasn't the police, it was the feds, one of the persons who was with them. So you got to understand this, right? Should Knight was bringing terror onto Uptown Records, had them scared. You understand? Had them scared. That's why uh, Andre Herrera would hire a, a person like Bill Whitfield that was a strong dude that didn't care about nothing and they would do his thing against somebody or anybody. He would did everything to protect Andre Herrera. But they, and this is the situation, Suge was extorting them, and they thought he was using extortion tactics. You understand? To get Mary J. Blige's contract right, to get Jodeci's contract right, 
and it was this other person, I don't know if it was Jeff Red, I don't know who it was, but it was somebody else in Uptown Records that he was helping to try to get their contracts right. Cause they wasn't getting no points, no publishing. They wasn't getting nothing but show money. You understand what I'm saying? So now, when Puff, Kirk Burroughs, that's the other person that was with them, they go up to the feds with all this paperwork, you understand? And I mentioned this before, you understand? They not only talking about the extortion stuff, they talking about how they trying to be made to and to have this, this what you call this promotion, this uh, distribution thing. And which I'm finding out they was they was they could they wasn't even gonna be a part of it until later. But they was in fear like they was trying to be made to be a part of this whole distribution thing that Suge Knight was trying to build up with Rockefeller, because it was Dame Dash, it was Irv Gotti, it was Jay Prince, um, and uh, Death Row. You understand what I'm saying? So now, everybody wanna, everybody wanna know who's this and who's that, and wanna go back and say, yo, how do you know? It came from the horse's mouth. He said he got all the paperwork to prove it. Kirk Burrow said it plenty of times, but nobody won't sit down with him. I mean, like... Despite the current controversy, both Jay-Z and Diddy have demonstrated remarkable resilience. Throughout their careers, they have navigated numerous challenges and setbacks, consistently adapting and evolving to maintain their status and influence. This resilience will likely serve them well as they address the latest rumors and continue to shape the future of hip-hop. The rumor that Jay-Z allegedly jumped Diddy to silence him before he could speak out is a dramatic and sensational story that has captured the public's imagination. While the truth behind the allegations remains unclear, the situation situation highlights the complex power dynamics and rivalries within the music industry as the story develops it underscores the importance of transparency, critical thinking, and responsible media coverage in navigating the often murky world of celebrity gossip. You know, you won't get none of these, you know, these radio stations and all this stuff like that to sit down with him. He said, I got the paperwork. He got files from the FB, I mean, from the, from the DEA and the, uh, the, the FBI, all that stuff like that. You got plenty of paperwork behind this whole stuff. But people want to get on here and say, yo, because they not privily to the information, you understand, directly from the people who was involved. And you get a person like me that don't give a damn and I'll repeat it and tell it. Oh, dude cap and dude looking for attention. No, it happened. Now other people coming out talking about it. They putting Jay-Z was a part of it. They telling their story and it all is coincide what we said years ago, when we said on, 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 on platforms before, when we said on your show before. So I can't worry about what these cats are saying. They doing it for the views, bruh. They doing it because they don't have nothing else to talk about. Like I said before, they gonna look at this and make a show about it. Keep helping they, keep helping they platform, Art. <laughs> so Puffy told, but Jay-Z, I ain't know about that. So Jay-Z, he told too? Said that years ago, man. Said that years ago, what, what, are, what, what are you gonna do? They, they're going to do whatever. Yo, listen to me. They're the reason why rap in New York went down the drain. They made sure that these young cats didn't come up with platforms and didn't come up with situations. Like Jay-Z, let, let, let me tell you something. Jay-Z, and, uh, and it, it, it's, it's funny. It's funny. We were talking about how Puff and Ja Rule was cool. But at one time, Puff was trying to trick Ja Rule into going at Jay-Z. That whole weekend that he was with Sarah. The whole weekend they was in that hotel room, that day they was in that hotel room. 
always coming back on that G5 jet. He was trying to talk uh, Ja Rule into going at Jay-Z. But now him and Jay-Z is like freaking frat. Crazy how things work out, huh? Jay was going to try to perform in Vegas. But Pac was in Vegas and him and his dudes now. And they wasn't going to let Jay-Z come out the hotel. They found out where Jay was at. And Jay wasn't, Jay wasn't going to come out the hotel. <laughs> he was going to miss that performance or whatever like that. But then Dame Dash called some people and he got back to Chaz and they uh, made some phone calls. And uh, Suge Knight had said, yo, that ain't me, bro. That's Pac with his wild self, man. I'm going to call him off, Jay. So he called the dogs off. Uh, uh, Suge called uh, Pac and they let Jay go do his concert and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? It was something that uh, Big D and Chaz, you know, they took and, and, and um, I think probably Eric B, they uh, talked to Suge about it and Suge talked to Pac and uh, he allowed Jay to do his concert. So Tupac, he found out Jay-Z was performing in Vegas and he tried to stop that from happening. But after Suge Knight spoke with Tupac, he ended up performing. Yeah. So that story really is true. Tupac, he really had an issue with Jay-Z. He really didn't like him then. Not at all. Do you think it's because he was cool with Biggie? His affiliation with Biggie? I don't know why he wasn't doing it, bro, but I know he wasn't letting him do that concert and Jay was scared of him all. <laughs> Jay wasn't coming out that hotel. <laughs> until he got clearance. <laughs> you and the Mad Rapper, the guy that was doing all them skits for the Bad Boy albums, what's the issue between both of y'all? Because you said he said something about you, right? Man, um, the Mad Rapper is Angelo, what is it, Angelo? What's, what's his cat name? He's a he's one of the hit men. And he talking shit, you know. All these guys gotta stay in Puff Pocket, bruh. You understand? The Mad Rapper was gonna go do, they was gonna give him a deal. And Puff told the nigga, yo, listen to me. That's your voice, but that's my ideal, that's my shit. You ain't doing nothing with it. They were gonna try to give him a show, a uh, 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 album, all that shit. She ain't go nowhere, cause Puff ain't wanted to go nowhere. But here this dude is still sucking him off, you understand, and didn't wanna talk bad about me. You don't know my relationship with this dude. I knew this dude before you knew this dude. This dude came, this, this puff nigga came up under the same game. You understand? I was taking care of him at the building, at the red zone, when he was around the streets with us. I took care of this kid, made sure he was all right. Did do did some slime bucket shit and then you gonna go back and run your mouth and he won't even let you even use stuff that you made up but because you made it up under the bad boy criteria, you can't even use it. Get out of here, man. Go suck him off like you've been doing. But how much more destruction she will cause before that happens. The future of Dalton hangs in the balance and only time will tell whether the village can recover from the chaos that has engulfed it. What's clear is that the people of Dalton deserve better and they're running out of patience. If Henyard doesn't face justice soon, it may be too late to salvage what's left of the village she was elected to serve.